Hello, I'm Marco Peyrat. I am part of the Debugger team in Visual Studio. And in this video, I want to show you a little bit about the different tools that we provide for variable inspection while uh, debugging. So in general, the way I like to work is whenever I'm editing code, I'll just have the current document I'm editing and then maybe my solution explorer so I can quickly navigate between the different files in my project. But once I'm done and I want to uh, start um, executing my code and seeing if I run into any issues or bugs, then I'll start debugging it. So in this case, I have a very simple space video game where I tried to emulate a small board game. I discovered that while I was uh, running the initialization code, one of the constraints about having ships in every uh, board game sector is not being followed. So I need to investigate a little bit more. By default, Visual Studio provides a debugging layout, which will have a couple of windows like the expression evaluation windows, call stack, exception settings, etc. They will provide uh, different advantages and disadvantages uh, depending on the context that you're doing. So for now, I'll close everything and then we'll start uh, seeing how each one can help you in your debugging experience. So first off, let's imagine that I get into my initialize um, method. I'm stopped at a breakpoint and I want to inspect the uh, value of the different fields and variables that I have here. So generally speaking, what people will generally do in this case when they just want to see as much code as possible is to open a debugger data tip, which is like a tool tip. And you can do this by hovering over different variables and then using the arrow button to expand its properties and henceforth trying to see if you can find a particular value that you don't expect. Of course, it always happens that you might sneeze inadvertently and move your mouse accidentally. And then after a long, uh, painful search for what you needed, you have to restart your search again. Visual Studio actually provides a way to mitigate this by having them stick until you click on the editor. And to do that, what you can do is go to Debug, Options, Debugging General, and look for the Keep expanded data tips open until clicked away. So if I do that and repeat the example, I can just move away and uh, it will remain until I click on another section. That is very useful when you know exactly um, where the problem occurred and you just want to inspect uh, values. But if you are thinking about uh, stepping through uh, your code and seeing how the state of the program changes until you actually find what's going on, then the tips are somewhat difficult to use. And for that, we provide the locals EE window, which stands for expression evaluation. You can open it by going to the debug windows menu and then looking for this small section with a bunch of different windows I'm going to cover later on in the video. So for now, let's go for the locals, which you can also open via the Control alt v l command. Once you open it, you'll be able to see everything that's uh, available in the local context where the current statement is. So in this case, I'm stopped at line 66. So I'll be able to see everything that exists inside the method, including method parameters and variables, even within local scopes inside the method. When I start stepping through my code, trying to see how the state is changing, you'll notice that practically nothing changes in color until I get to here. And what this symbolizes is what variables change their value from the last point in which I was stopped at. So if I continue stepping, I'll notice that these ones are changing. And my bug, as I mentioned, is that ships have to be greater than zero. And I notice here that chips generate is zero. So I'm in a case where this is failing. Now I need to investigate what is going on there. I'll notice that the problem is being generated by this line. The problem here is that it could be either the result of ship quantity returning zero or ship strength returning zero or something in fleet damage returning a number that's greater than what I need. So in those cases, the only way I can actually start investigating further is to step into each method and seeing 
what values they're returning and trying to find the culprit that way. The debugger provides something called a serial variable. And what a serial variable does is get you the value of things that don't exist in your program, but that convey some important notion of the state of it. So in this case, I care about what each method returned. So whenever you step over a statement that has function calls, we'll generate the return set of variables where you'll be able to see the different values of each method that was executed. By looking at that, I can see that in this case, everything seems to be correct. So I'll step again until I see an actual issue. And in this case, I can see that ship quantity returned zero and that should never be the case. And hence I have found my culprit. As you've noticed, having done that required me to be seeing a lot of different variables that aren't really relevant to what I'm currently investigating, and it's just cluttering my debugging space. And for that, we provide the others window, which will help simplify what you're seeing and investigating. So if I go back to the debug windows menu and open the others window, here we'll only show what we believe is relevant to the current statement you're investigating. Now, instead of seeing everything that is accessible inside the method's context, I can just concentrate on whatever is used in the current expression, which is what I care. So now when I step, I'll be able to more easily see the different values that are uh, being generated and continue investigating. And of course, the return value is not the only still variable that we have. We have um, uh, many more that I'll cover in a little bit. So the final one that I want to uh, showcase is the watch window. And what that window is useful for is for seeing and inspecting variables that are outside the local context that you care about while you are changing the program state. So in this case, every time I generate a ship, I'll be uh, affecting the global state of the ship counter. I want to see how that changes as I'm stepping through my code. So I can open the window and specify that I'm interested in this particular variable. In this case, the board view model ship count. I also care about the different ships that I'm generating. So now every time I step, I'll be able to see how these two values are changing and concentrate on trying to figure out if there's anything wrong with them. So now that those uh, pesky bugs are out of the way, I can start um, testing the rest of my video game. In this case, we also provide a way to connect to an online service and that enables online play. So let's see if everything I wrote there is working as expected. Just to make sure I reset everything to the way Visual Studio is on by default, I step and then discover that the actual URL value for the server connection is null, and that should not be the case. I didn't see any exception being thrown, but I just want to double check if that's the case. So what you can do is go to exception settings. If you don't have it open, you can open it by going to debug windows exception settings. And once you have it open, you can enable the debugger to stop at any first chance exceptions. We'll be able to take it from there if anything happened. So let's retry the scenario again, step. And indeed, I do run into an exception. And in this case, I can see that the issue is that the account ID that I passed is not matching the one that I wanted to test. So it might be useful to see why that's the case. It's probably a mistake on my side that I passed the wrong string. However, I can see that I did pass the correct string. So that means that something between this call stack frame and this one modified the input that caused the issue. So in those cases, it's very useful to investigate where the exception happened. In this case, I don't see any value because I'm already too late at that point, And hence the exception details might not be as useful. I go back one frame and again, I don't see anything going wrong here. And then I move back and there doesn't seem to be anything else wrong. However, this is getting a little bit kind of annoying because it's taking a little bit of real estate. So 
I might want to remove it. But at that point, then I lost critical details about it. Like there was uh, the exception type, like the different error messages or properties that I could have, the call stack it had. So in those cases, we also provide another pseudo variable called exception. You can type the dollar sign and then type exception. And once you do that, you'll be able to see all the details that we showed in that dialog in the watch window. And by having that, then we can continue stepping and seeing the code without having the window open, but still have the details available if we need them. As a matter of fact, we always append that seal variable to the locals window when an exception is detected. So you'll always have it there. Let's continue on. We go to the get endpoint method and discover that indeed I mistakenly appended an extra a string to the account ID, and that's uh, generating the issue. So in those cases, I can just fix this and continue investigating. Since I know it was a very slight mistake and the URL is not being generated incorrectly, I still want to test the server. So instead of having to fix the issues and then recompile and then test again, I can actually, through the locals window, edit the value. When you double click on the value column of a particular variable, you'll enter edit mode, and then you can type whatever you want. In this case, the URL from my server. So, And when you enter, you'll notice that URL changed to that value. And now this won't fail. I can continue stepping my program without having to change anything, without having to restart debugging or recompile. And then I'll be able to uh, continue testing, and everything will be OK. And of course, the debugger provides many more pseudo variables that will uh, be useful in more advanced scenarios like the async state machine or uh, the user uh, value. The ones that will display here and will be available depend on the project that you're debugging. In this case, uh, we're debugging a program developed for the OPF in C Sharp. But if we have one developed, for example, in C++, then we'll provide other useful pseudo variables that might be worth it. So just to cover that one quickly, we can go to uh, another small application that I have. This is a native Windows window. And when I run it, you'll be able to see why it is useful to know this pseudo variables that the debugger provides. In Windows applications, you generally are calling Windows APIs. In this case, I'm calling the copy file, which has paths that don't exist on my computer, and it will fail. However, when I step, I know it didn't succeed because my program is not doing what I want, but I can't see what failed. There's nothing in the others. There's nothing in the locals. There's nothing in the watch. No exception got thrown. But Windows provides a mechanism to get the last error that happened on a Windows API call by calling the get error method. Now, I would have to modify my code to figure out what went wrong and then be able to inspect what Windows returned. The debugger provides a shortcut for this via the error pseudo variable. If I type that, I'll be able to see that the error code returned by the copy file method was three, which if I know what that stands for, great, but if you don't, you can always, next to expressions, write a comma, and that will show up what we call the format specifier. And this will let you modify how things are uh, displayed in the value column. For native applications that return this type of errors, you want the HR format specifier. When I hit Enter, now I'll be able to see the details of the actual issue that caused the function call to fail. In this case, the path was not found. And then I can actually start fixing my program. And I think that covers pretty much the basics of variable inspection. Thank you.